2005 Goldwing that was having overheating problems. The right fan was not working. Yeah, guys, this thing would just overheat. Well, it was hitting like three quarters of the way hot. And, and show them what the actual problem was. This is factory. This thing has never been apart before. This connector was still connected here, but out it, of the socket. It was twisted out of the socket. So, basically, to determine that uh, it was the relay switch, we found out there was only one relay, right? Right. And the other fan was working, so we knew it was an electrical problem or a motor problem. And the uh, fuse was good. Yeah, and the fuse is good. Let's take a look at the fuse real quick. Okay, so the first thing we do is check the fuses, and they're all good, so it's not a problem. Now, your each individual bike, depending on which one you're dealing with, might, might have a different location. So we'll just let you look that one up online. And just for all you new Goldwing owners out there. Do it yourselfers. Do it yourselfers. Let's see if I can get a view of the actual air filter. There's the air filter. So, yes, that is the brain box that's on top of this. So, wow. <laughs> yeah, Honda got that one figured out. All right, so the first piece we're going to put, I hate to show you guys in reverse, but of course I'm late as usual. But this is the air intake that keeps your legs warm. So this is where it goes. So we're going to start the putting it back together just for you guys out there that are trying to figure out how to do this. Maybe it'll kind of help you seeing how the job actually works. Show them where it goes. All right, kind of see us. There we go. So she's back in. We're going to put the clips in real quick. All right, so the clips that hold this, there we go. It's just a little push clip, so and show where they go in at. To operate them, push them in flat. To open them, you take a screwdriver. This is when they're sitting inside push of the... Push the middle, and they open. And there you have it. Okay, cool. Okay, guys, put your finger down there and let them see that clip. So they, Okay, that's clip one. Kind of pulling back. And here's clip two. And there we go. We're getting it. All right, the first thing he did was put this, the the uh, heater pipe, the vent that goes back to the legs, or, you know, the onboard heater system. And it's one right here. And the second one here, and there's a little, um, little wire harness that's going to have to be attached in the rear there. You see it kind of land to the side, the blue wires. Isn't that it? Yep. Okay. So we're going to do that real quick. We'll be right back with you. The next thing you're going to see us doing is the air breather pipe. See the 422 there? That right there is that. And uh, what was it? Just a one screw. It's just a one little Phillips head screw. No big deal. And um, point to the front. Only fits one way. It only fits one way, guys. Can't mess that up. But that's your air breather, just in case you were wondering. All right, guys. As you notice, this wiring harness or the junction box is still kind of just hanging there. But they do got kind of an ingenious way to do it since there's no way to physically get a screwdriver in. Let's see if I can kind of get that. There you go. You just turn them by hand. Now that's as cool as it gets as far as I can tell. Hey, plus you shed a little blood already, didn't you? Right on. Ten points we got. The gold wings got a little blood today. And there you go, guys. It's done by hand. Took about three or four minutes and it's a wrap on that. What's the next part we're going to be doing? The fork shroud. The fork shroud it is, guys. Let's show them where that goes. Okay, you guys see that? It goes right. That's it right there. 
just kind of tucks in right there. You see the little fastener goes here. And there should be another one, I think. Yeah, right there. Right by the ignition. And then, then, then we have this big. Now that's one hell of a fastener, guys. Anyway, there you go. And it goes up under the fender. And it goes up under the fender. Yeehaw. Okay, guys, there you go. See where his finger's at? That's exactly where we just punched it in at. So that's the fastener on the bottom. Of course, it's got two holes on the front, but they have other fasteners, and you'll see how they will go back together. So that's your fender guard. Okay, we're going to put up the uh, center thing here with the comm connections and all that. So uh, how this is done is kind of crazy, so let me just kind of show you. Okay, you see the plugs down here, and where they go to is right here. Now this is kind of tricky, but I'm going to show you how to do it. Alright, we're kind of negotiating it back on now. As you may notice with a gold wing, and I got you right here. Just, just there you go. It's just kind of easy, does it? What do you think it costs to replace that if it breaks? Two nuts. Right leg. He's calling it a left nut and a right leg to replace that, which is probably pretty accurate. Alright, let's see if we can get those back on. As you see, this is kind of tricky too because you have the you have three things actually being put together up here. More. Because you gotta get this under here. You gotta get that over there under. And then you gotta get your hand. here blindly and kind of just hope and we're basically going to try to get that connection back on real quick okay just got the first one down as you see he's just kind of leaning over blindly Field. guessing why did he got them snapped? Don't forget to put the antenna wire back. Antenna wire back or no signal for the old radio. Right. Now the tricky part. Now it gets tricky, he says. Yeah. You gotta get that under. And this over. Alright, cool. Opposite side now. By the way, what's the temperature outside right now? Oh, upper 30s. Yeah, warmed up to the upper 30s. <laughs> and I'm still sweating. The guy's a German. <laughs> now to retrieve some parts. Now we're going to get some more parts. Okay, as you see, we're putting the gas lid back on. And you don't have to, but... It gives you another handle to hold on to. It gives you just that little bit of handle and a little bit more room to work with, so... It's two screws. Trust me, if this guy's taking it off, it's more convenient. What was that, Phillips head? Yeah. So it comes off that easy. And we're getting ready to do the tricky part up here. Oh boy. Oh, we gotta do the tricky part down here yet. Oh yeah, we still gotta do the dicky tricky down here on the bottom. The biggest part about this next section is is don't force anything under any condition. Just kinda kinda let it do its thing. You see he's kind of negotiating a very easy. That fiberglass is expensive. trying to get it to line up right now. Okay, look.
looking good over here. It's kind of bundled up or something. Let's see. We're getting there. We're getting there. Patience is a virtue. Patience is a virtue that will save you a lot of cash on this job. Still kind of negotiating it. Is she snapped in? Well. Now here's the tricky thing about this. Is there's not just one. It's like five different things you're going through with one bolt. So. Okay. Kind of looks like those holes are lining up pretty good. Yep. So we'll put the nuts back on there. All right, we're putting all the nuts back on, and or the bolts, should I say, and it, they're all 10 millimeter. As you see, he's got the cool little twist-on wrench there. Alright, cool, so we're going to throw these fasteners on and we'll see you back in a second. Okay, we're putting the uh, trim pieces back on. Or the little fasteners up here around the ignition. Pretty simple, a little Phillips head will do it. Alright, we're kind of mounting the outsides now, then we're going to put the wind deflectors on. It's always a little tricky to line it up, isn't it? Yeah, because you got there's so many different pieces of stuff layered on top of each other that that one fastener holds together. In one way, it's very efficient; in another way, it's just kind of a pain in the butt. Okay, the deflector only fits one way. It's kind of got like a little grooved way it goes in there. Large goes at the top. It's the fairing. Yep. There you go, guys. And the trick to all this is uh, put all the screws in there, hand tight, and we can adjust to make everything else fit snug. Yeah, you don't ever want to just run them in there all the way as tight and tight as they'll torque out because with plastic it just continuously adjustment until you're finally ready to put that last little bit of cinching down right yep. all right we've got this side pretty much buttoned up except for tightened down but we got fasteners everywhere there's supposed to be one all the right screws back in the right places you know man Guys, if you decide to do this, it's actually kind of fun. I mean, I guess if you're kind of like screwed up in the head like we are, we like working on our own stuff. But um, what do you think Honda would charge to have taken down this far and diagnose it and just in labor? It's Ninety dollars an hour, and we're going on uh, four hours. We're going on four hours, and it's ninety bucks an hour right now. We got at least another hour to go, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. So there you go, guys. Probably 500 bucks. And of course, they're probably going to go ahead and just replace the fan rather than find out what's wrong with it. You can go ahead and thank the uh, new parts changers for that. All right. So we'll button you up on the. We're going to put the other side on just like we did this one. And then we'll bring you back for the next segment. Okay. Now, this is how, just to give you an idea, this is all we're doing to torque it right here. A little snug. It's all plastic. We're not trying to set any torque records here. We're just tensing it up. Would you say maybe three pounds? Most. Three pounds, two or three pounds. Because guess what? Once it breaks, it's broke. Okay, you're going to notice this cable right here, and you see the key lock down here that's how you lock your glove box and how it attaches is right here 
There you go. It just slides in that little ball, that little hole right there, and game over. When you hit the key, it locks or unlocks. All right. We'll slap it together real quick. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe we just want to go without a glove box. Did y'all ever think about that in YouTube land? Okay. This block box, because it's got a lock on it, it has two screws and then the push pins. Yeah, so get what he's saying. See the two Phillips right there? But then the, the, the same push fasteners, they're kind of like car fasteners they use on cars. You just push them in, pop, done. See if I can get that up close while you're doing it. Mm, got a bloody knuckle there. There you go. Just that fast, guys. Alright, guys. So you see these three connections right here. What do they go to? Uh, IP, three play or whatever. Any of your hookup that you need. Some juice. Probably to your comm system, too, right? Yeah. Nope. Not separate. to the comm? No. That's separate. Intercom is there. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. The comm just comes out the side. I guess it's a little cutaway groove back there for it. Yeah, when you're putting this back together, don't forget to bring your comm out. And this one right here has the accessory plug-in. Is that standard? Uh, yes. All right. So you're going to have to worry about the accessory plug, too. But just make sure you put it in that groove it's cut for, so that way you don't cut your wire off when you uh, put it through there. And eventually these little guys right here will see it our way. Okay, we just got this uh, the three wires back up through there, and this side right here uses all clips. What is it? Four, one, two, three, four. Yep. Yeah. And you notice over here, guys, where we got the uh, we got our accessory going in our com link. Uh, you just have to kind of put it in that cutout channel, or you're going to have serious problems. Check its function real quick. Make sure it's all good. All right. So we got two working doors. What's next, big guy? He's just like, by the way, y'all see his little California sidecar over here. Poor guy. He's just trying to make it. Yeah, that's that's what the word for that is badass. We're going to do a review on that one day. But he loves that thing. That is a badass bike. All right, now this trim piece right here, what were you just saying about it? This is the one that will bite you in the ass, right? Correct. These little tabs do a good job of holding this piece in to cover up all these screws. See, that's the trim but line. Don't force it, especially when it's cold. Forcey is breaky. You see him, he's just going to kind of gently work it right here. Oops, that's the wrong side. Well, first, we're going to put the right side on. See, we were just checking to see if y'all were asleep yet. There we go. It only goes on one way. Yeah. There's a little clip at the top. It right. slides in. It doesn't clip to anything. It just slides in. Kind of like a starter. Right. And then you just start working your way back and forth gently. you got to put one side in and then the other side. Just gently push it in. Yeah, when you're taking it out, can you give me any tips on that? Same way. Grab it down here. Just pull a little bit to the side. Once you get it started, it will peel up. Okay, got you guys. Just be force. real careful on Always that. Always push one side in, other side down. Reverse the process, pull one side up. Do not pull it straight off. And the reason or is... push it straight on. And this is a painted piece of trim, so that's going to be very pricey to replace. Here goes the other side. He just kind of easily hooks it up at the top. Oh, my baby's looking better by the minute. 
All right, what's next, Chief? This is the speedometer cover. Yeah, guys, this is what covers your cluster, but there's a cluster, all right, and there's it's... There's a cluster under it. Yeah, and see that plug right there? Holy crap, that's a pain in the butt. It goes to a mounted plug So there's no the ignition. There's no give, so you got to magically do the Spider-Man hand and get in there and plug that thing in. And to take it apart, you have to stick a screwdriver in here, move this clip forward, and pull the plug at the same time, so... It's worse coming apart than going together. Can you see that, guys? He's saying that right here, you're going to see my finger push it. That's what's got to come up, and then it slides apart. You have to take a small screwdriver to get up in it. Small screwdriver, he's saying. You want to go? Screwdriver goes in here, and you push that forward, and then pull the plug out with your other hand. Of course. Of course, yeah. And of course you do all this blindfolded, not being able to see anything. All right, well, we're going to try our best to put it on. Bear with us. Okay, we've got it snug back in there, and he's just now putting the second bolts in, or the two bolts to the rest of his clips. Okay, speaker covers are pretty simple. Let me show you, and, and the same thing when they're coming out, right? Just a little flathead. Yeah, putting our clips in, it's going to be speaker cover time. And this just pops in. See, it's got the lips. You just slide right in and pop. Done. Woohoo! She's looking more like a motorcycle. Got a rough. Take them off. You grab at the top. Pull down. You see that, guys? You just grab at the top and pull down. Got to put these last fasteners in just to keep a thing from right. rattling too much. And there you go. Now we have a dashboard and our fiberglass back on trim pieces. And now for the seat. And now for the big should dig the seat. By the way, let's take a look at the battery where it's at. Because if you got a gold wing, you've never really dug into it. There's a fuse panel and battery. This looks like the fuel sending unit. Right there. Or is it right here? Which one's which? Oh, I see fuel lines. Yeah. There we go. There's your fuel sending unit right there. I don't. I guess you can just change that without a um, just where it's at, right? You don't have yeah. to take anything else off. No. So that's one easy thing. Oh, looks like we got a junction box here for relays and stuff. Ah, huh, pretty cool. Oh, you know what? I bet that's where your uh, Let's see, I'm checking it out. Your relays with the tail light and Yeah, any of your relays is going crazy. I was kind of looking for the uh I don't I don't have can't see it well enough. Alright. Okay, here's seat. How's the seat go? Let's let's show them how the seat goes. Seat has two clips in the front. Alright. Clip under here. All right. The back just slides in under the back rest. Okay. Go down like this. Push it back. You get those right there where they kind of line up. There it is. Seats in. Now the handle. Yeah, and I've got the actual backrest off it. It started fading on me, so I'm going to paint that. These are paint. <laughs> this holds the backrest. This is not normally on a gold wing. Yeah, this is aftermarket, right? Correct. Kuriakin. Uh There's two holes. Go through the seat. You got to go I'll show you on this side right here. Got to go through the seat and catch the nuts on the frame that you can't see. So basically we have a fishing expedition. Right. Slow going is best. <laughs> Slow going is best for fishing. But what he's saying is yeah, this sucker right here is going to have to go in there three or four inches, at least three inches before you feel anything. And you if this... see this, the bolts. 
Yeah. There you go. And this so. is non-thread here, so you got that much distance through the seat to get to the frame to grab it. Anyway, we shall see how this goes. All right, so he says before you go fishing, you have a little pre-fishing trip with a Phillips head screwdriver to line it up. Feeling close. All right, we have one ready to play ball. These are the old holy crap bars. Did we get lucky? Alright, so we're going to put these two on and we'll come back and show you how to slap those covers on. 